Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Pork here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Now, as you may have noticed over the last few days, uh, we've had the Eddie Hearn Circus in Saudi. You know, the Will Joshua and Ruiz finally get it on for rematch, blah de blah and Look, we all know it's going to happen, don't we? I didn't think it would. I thought Andy Ruiz were going to take the moral high ground over how the Saudi Arabian government treat people. But boxing taking the moral high ground, bloody hell. <laughs> that's, uh, that's never going to happen, is it? It's a sport built on money. Now, what are you going to get now is is a lot of people you're going to get a lot of people just blagging it and just burying their heads in the sand and we know who those people are don't we it's the sky sports lot the matchroom lot it's all about the money and blah de blah there's just no scruples whatsoever from these lot and the wheeled out Eddie Hearn who, who now has got it just off to a tee I mean the brass neck on him is unbelievable I thought Frank Warren were bad but and Don King but and Bob Aaron but Eddie Hearn he just takes it to another level doesn't he he's just going to sit there and say you're trying to take money out of fighters mouths and who are we to uh, question you know what's going on about morals and this and that and blah de blah look these people are just grubby little people and here's one of the grubby little people his name's Adam Smith when it all comes out about him one day everybody will say do you know what Porky you were right but this man looks to me like a Dennis Nielsen clone I mean look at him look at the scowl on that look at that look at that is he the man that you'd let your daughter go out on a date with eh? now listen to the Rob Tepper interview Rob Tepper at no stage in this interview does he how can I explain it at no stage in this interview does he give his own opinion or does he press forward and this is why Rob Tebbett's engagement levels on his YouTube channel are poor same as Coogan's they're not giving an opinion, they're not giving the fans anything, they're asking a question and then they're getting put in the place and they're retreating. Rob Tebbett reminds me of the Italians in World War II. Do you know what I mean? They just put their hands up straight away, didn't they? You know, when the Germans invaded them. Retreated straight away. So let's listen to this and what I'm going to do, we're going to have a little bit of fun on this video, so get ready. Alright, here we go. This is Rob Tubbett for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. Delighted, as always, to be joined by Adam Smith. We're here at the Ruiz Joshua 2 press conference in London. Adam, how are you doing? You've been doing a bit of travelling. We have been doing a lot of travelling. The up left uh, here on Tuesday. Uh, I think we've taken in four or five different time zones, three continents, four cities, 30 odd hours in the air. Um, yeah, fantastic, uh, exciting different press tour um, yeah it's been great uh, we went to exciting and different two big words for Adam Smith there yeah it's been great look at the body language Saudi Arabia first then via Dubai back to, to New York uh, and then here for the final leg I spent a lot of time with with AJ and his team uh, plenty of time as well with Andy Ruiz his dad and uh, yeah listen there they're great guys, they're great fighters, they're, they're ready to go again and um, I think it makes for a, a, an extraordinary rematch because no one quite knows what's going to happen. Uh... No one knows what's going to happen, right? Joshua got dropped four times in a quitting first fight but they're selling this as nobody knows what's going to happen. So I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. They're all going to get paid millions and millions of pounds and it's going to go the same way it's first one. All right, that's what's going to happen. That's why it's in Saudi Arabia. All right, so I'll just to let you know. 
Um, who's going to be favourite? Who's going to prevail? Is it going to be the same again? Is it going to be totally different? Um, Is it going to be totally different? They're not fighting in England where Joshua's from, are they? Right? That's the first point. Second point, I've already just said it. He got leathered in first fight and quit. But yet they're throwing him straight back in with a guy he's quit against and got levered against. These people haven't got Joshua's best interests at heart. They've got their own grubby little paws at heart. That's what it is. In this, you know, different setting. It different setting. That's a new one. Different setting. In Saudi, uh, neutral setting, in a, a stadium that's not yet been built. In a Stadium's not even been built. Uh, a place that, you know, a lot of us have, have not experienced before. I had 24 hours there. Or we were welcomed. Well, you only stopped for 24 hours, Adam, and it's a great place. Didn't you do no sightseeing? Warmly, it was... Uh, it was uh, it was great to meet uh, various people over there, and uh, we look forward to going back and uh, covering what will be an amazing sporting event. Did you meet any of them people, Adam? That behead people? Did you meet them? Did you pick up any tips? What do you make of Saudi Arabia as a venue? Me and you have spoken at length in in the past about Anthony Joshua's fights or the venues of his fights. I know you, as many other British people, would love to see him over here. We've also spoken about America in the past. Not sure we've ever spoken about the Middle East or Saudi Arabia. How do you feel about the fight being in Saudi Arabia? Yeah, well, plenty of people have come out and said it's a very controversial place. Uh, controversial? <laughs> controversial? What? <laughs> controversial, oh my God. Bloody hell. Um, I understand that, I understand the feelings about that. Uh, first and foremost, we didn't... But we don't care. ...make the decision. We wanted it in Cardiff. Uh, Adam Smith didn't make the decision, so he's categorically come out now and he's saying Sky Sports did not make the decision. Right, so Adam Smith's now washing his hands of it. Okay, fair enough. So Sky Sports didn't make the decision. So who did? Anthony Joshua and his team decided that they wanted it in Saudi Arabia. So Anthony Joshua and his team... Right, Freddie Cunningham, Brown Bread Fred, and all the rest of them all decided they wanted it in Saudi. But yeah, Anthony Joshua, he wanted to go back to New York. He wanted to do it in New York where it all went wrong. Then they said they wanted it in England for fans. For the fans. Because the fans are what counts, the UK fans. You UK fans are what count? And then lo and behold, they get offered more money to fight in Saudi. So what do they do? They fight in Saudi, don't they? Eh? Um, they make the decision. We've backed Anthony Joshua from the very beginning. We've covered every single one of his professional fights. This is uh, arguably the biggest of all. So uh, obviously we are going to cover it and uh, cover it to the best of our abilities. So um, look, it's uh, a logistical challenge. Uh, it's got some difficulties, um, but I think having been there, um, I'm making sure that I get the assurances that I want. Um, you know, our team will be confident that we can produce another uh, a great show. Um, but as I said, it's an event that we are covering because we've been with Anthony Joshua since 2013 and um, we're not stopping now. What kind of assurances was it that you were looking for? I want to make sure that um, the women on my team are, uh, are comfortable and uh, they can be, they can work to uh, their professional abilities and um, you know we're a team and we go as a team whether we go to New York, whether we go to to Cardiff, whether we go to Saudi Arabia so uh, that's very important for me and I'm uh, assured that will be the case and uh, that we look forward very much to uh, a, uh, a terrific event um, but as I said we're not responsible for the, the venue that is very much the the promoter Eddie Hearn and the uh, and the fighter himself Anthony Joshua it was uh, AJ's decision ultimately I think because um, I think we were going to go to Cardiff uh, the last hour Saudi Arabia came in. Uh, it's something different. Uh, I've always liked to challenge. Uh oh my God, something different. I've always liked to challenge. A challenge is when you climb Mount Everest. That's what a challenge is, Mr. Bean. Or a challenge is when you've got no money and no food in the fridge and your kids want new trainers for school. That's a challenge, but 
eaten educated brats like Adam Mr Bean Smith they don't have that problem do they a challenge to them is going to Saudi Arabia and walking about with a microphone under the nose that's a challenge to him oh my god could you imagine these with some real challenges like for, for say for example waking up in the morning wondering where they're gonna find 150 quid for the drug habit and supporting a family at the same time as well that's a fucking challenge can put in a boxing show on a Saudi on with his production team a challenge oh my god could you imagine these if they were in dark because they, they grass all the mates up wouldn't they um, you know, it's been compared to other places around the world that have staged uh, events like this. Obviously, in boxing, you've got the Rumble in the Jungle, the Thriller in Manila. Uh, so this is going to be, you know... How many thrillers in Manilas and Rumble in the Jungles have we had since 1974 and 1975? So, in 45 years, how many fights has there been in the jungle after Ali's fight? And how many fights has there been in Manila? That, that have been you know world title fights massive fights how many the answer is zero that's the answer boys and girls zero and he knows that mr bean knows his box and he knows that and these people will have people around them like bob me historians and spencer fearing who says he's an historian these people all know that and they all know what it is but as I've said before, nobody is going to come out and say a word. For example, Frank Warren's column yesterday. Not a mention about the Saudi Arabian farce. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you why, shall I? Frank Warren's already trying to get in on act with the Saudis. That's why he's not taking the moral high ground this time, any other time. He's screaming it from the rooftops, isn't he? But he's not this time, is he? Because he wants in on the act. They've got no scruples, a lot of them. None of them. So, um, iconic in its own way and very different. But um, uh, from our point of view, it's a, it's a case of it's an anti-Joshua fight and that's why we're covering it. From your point of view, being the broadcaster, what are your feelings when people start talking about the likes of sport, sports washing, uh, the human rights issues that have kind of plagued Saudi Arabia for a number of years now. In your position as head of Sky Sports, what do you make of those comments with the show that you were attached to? I think, Rob, as I said, you know, it's about Anthony Joshua this. This isn't about, you know, politics. This is about sport. Uh, it's a sporting event. Uh, and as I said, whether it's in Cardiff or, or London or, or the Middle East, we do our best to produce it in the most professional way we can. Um, with my team all around me and uh, and that's what I mean I've got a very mixed team um, a diverse team uh, a team full of very uh, brilliant women and um, and that's what I make sure that everybody is uh, is comfortable everybody is um, is allowed to work in their uh, in their terrific ways in their professional ways and um, we want to make sure that we uh, we deliver this event on Sky Sports box office for uh, for our many customers uh, because it is an Anthony Joshua um, fight which is probably the most important of his life. Uh, it's the rematch of a, an, a you know a shock loss in June, uh, and we all want to know what happens next. And of course, it's the most important fight in his life. He wants to get paid, doesn't he? You're getting over forty million pound for one fight, plus all sort of commercial deals. Of course, you, it's important. The main thing is, Joshua turns up for the fight and Ruiz, because if this fight has stadium problems, or Andy Ruiz pulls out at a later date, and I'm going to still stand by my theory that Andy Ruiz... Look at text messages is coming in over this now. I'm going to stand by my theory that Andy Ruiz is going to pull out with a few weeks to go, and then Eddie Hearn's going to be left holding the baby. So what he's going to do, he'll get somebody drafted in to fight Joshua. And then Ruiz will go uh, as an interim fight. And Ruiz will have his interim fight then. And what will happen is Ruiz will fight Wilder. That's what I think is going to happen. But could be wrong, but we're going to see, aren't we? It's a game of cat and mouse. But personally, I think, I think Joshua will fight in Saudi. But whether Ruiz fights, I don't know. But we're going to see.
But already Al Heyman's giving Eddie Hearn the run around. AJ's career, so it's about Anthony Joshua and Sp If you manage a team, you have to try Monday.com. Monday.com is a platform to track Joshua and sport, and that's the that's the point I want to make. And once again, Robbie, it wasn't our choice to go there. Uh, we're broadcasting the event, and um, you need to talk to Eddie and, and, and Anthony about you know why they chose Saudi. I think there's many reasons for it. Um, but as I said, I went there and uh, had a very warm welcome, and um, uh, I'm looking forward to making sure that my team go back and we uh, we can do our jobs. Um. Well, of course they gave you a warm welcome, Mr. Bean, didn't they? Jesus, your kind of people over there, aren't they? Savages, brutal, rough, tough, rugged. To the best of our abilities. I appreciate that. And um, with that being said, but do you still do you still understand fans and uh, viewers of the sport and just sports fans in general their reticence to, to see a show over in Saudi Arabia with these issues that have gone on in the country? I totally understand. I mean, Saudi Arabia has had a, a you know a, a lot of. A lot of uh, light shone on it uh, for various reasons. I <laughs> light shone on it. Light shone on it. Oh my God, that's a good one. That you can tell he's eating educated, can't you? Oh my God, fucking light shone on it. Fucking hell fire. Over the years. Um and some have been very difficult to accept. Um, look, they are trying, obviously, to put a lot of sporting events on. Um, you know, I learned a great deal going out there that Mariah Carey uh, was was recently performing. And What's Mariah Carey got to do with boxing? What has Mariah Carey got to do with boxing? What, what are these fucking people on here? They brought a lot of entertainment over to Saudi. I think there's a tennis event uh, the week before or the week after we're there. Uh, they've had other sporting events in Saudi Arabia. Of course, they've had two boxing ones in the World Super Series final and uh, also in, in Amir Khan's uh, recent fight. So this isn't a one-off. This isn't the first. Um, so, um, yeah, I can understand the difficulties and the issues. I try and uh, keep to the, the fact that it's an event that we cover and it's a sporting event that is uh, the fight is what matters and, um, you know, we want to get on with that. People will point to the fact that it is in Saudi Arabia. We, we've seen the money that's been ploughed into not just this sport, but other sports by the Middle East. The cynics in the sport look at it as potentially a cash grab or a cash out aimed at Anthony Joshua. Can you see people's suggestions there? I bet he says it's a business. Obviously, there's a lot of money on the table. Um, he, I think he was offered a great deal to fight in New York, a great deal to fight in Cardiff, and more to fight in Saudi Arabia. So. It's a business, Rob, you know that, I know that, and... Uh... It's a business, oh my God, what do we know, eh? It's a bit... What they mean by when you say to them, well, how come that's happening? They say it's a business, it means we are greedy little bastards. That's what it means. Um, it's up to AJ's team and to get the best deal on the table possible for him. Um, is it a cash grab? Ask him that. I, I think it's a, a fight that he needs to win. Um, I would love to have seen it in Cardiff because I think that might have given him the psychological edge in Britain. Um, I think Andy Ruiz was was being difficult about that. I think they wanted it in a neutral venue. So maybe when the money came in, the neutral venue, and maybe a chance. I know AJ spends a lot of time in, in Dubai and, and other areas of the Middle East. Maybe he thought, look, this is a, this is something which is going to be different. And maybe, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a, a possibility that, you know, it's it's a country that may be going forward in a in a different way. Who knows? Maybe this will be the start of something to 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 look back on, like the Rumble in the Jungle was in Zaire. I mean, there's you know there's a lot of countries around the world where there's been difficulties. So I think as far as AJ goes, it's probably right. The Rumble in the Jungle were 1974. Since then, how many times did Muhammad Ali fight in the Rumble in the Jungle? Was there a Rumble in the Jungle two, three, four, or five? Was there a thriller in the Miller 2, 3, 4 or 5? No, there wasn't. They were just opportunities for countries to take the light off that country and shine it on an event. And that's all this is. Right? It's, there's a lot of bad stuff going on in Saudi Arabia now, so they're throwing a lot of money around to take people's minds off it. Enter Eddie Earn with his air plugs, his fake teeth and his wide awake suits. And that's it. And enter Mr Bean. Alright, old 
Buffalo Bill here. Jesus. Bill Skins is fifth. Jeez, God. He, he looked at the situation, looked at what the event was going to be. Uh, he's told me that uh, uh, it's it's about the whole build-up that we're going to see over there. It's going to be about the show on the night. and It's going to be about the show on the night. Who gives a fuck about the show on the night? Who gives a fuck about that? Do you think Joshua's actually sat down and actually bothered about the fucking show and all that? He just wants to get paid. Jeez. And, and, and all of that. So he's obviously excited about doing And all of that. Doing something different. He's always talked about being a global fighter, not just fighting in, in Britain. He's had one in America. So, you know, this is this is new grounds. And um, I think Eddie will say at the, the press conference that it's a, uh, a place that will want to be doing a lot more uh, boxing and other sporting events over the next um, a few years. And um, obviously they've got a lot of money. So let's see how that develops. There you go. Slipped up there, didn't it? Obviously, they've got a lot of money. Grubby, grubby, grubby little people. But like I said, who's going to say a word? They all want to get in on act, don't they? Hey, Denon want to get in on act as well. This is just up his street, but it's not my street. Up like this, you won't get me going out to Saudi. I'd end up with me with me head cut off or something. Do you know what I mean? I won't be able to go out there and drink water and. Sit, sit watching a boxing match with a can of Tizer. Are you having a laugh? Jesus. I'll be taking bottles of vodka out if I went out there in water bottles, but... Nah, I'm not having it, mate. I'm not having this, Mr Bean. It's a cash grab. Fucking Bean, look at him. Bean! Bean! Run a bean! Could have been! Should have been. Fucking never been. Beanie! But for me, as I've said to you already, this is a an event... Beans on toast! that we are covering we are not dis uh, we, we, we didn't have the decision to go there it was um, that was what was decided we are going there and I want to make sure that we uh, are, are treated as as a professional team as I said wherever I work I, I care about my staff that's that's my concern and that we want to make sure and I think you cared about Glenn McCrory didn't you hey eh? you had a lot of love for Glenn, Glenn McCrory didn't you Mr Bean you backstabbing cunt they will be absolutely assured that uh, I'm welcomed with um, with uh, with a lot of warmth and hospitality that they can go about. What, like you did Glenn McCrory, eh? You welcomed him with a bit of hospitality, didn't you, eh? You backstabber. Then blocked him on WhatsApp, you sneak. Jobs uh, in the proper manner, and that's the most important thing. Speaking of your staff, I watched Anna Warhouse's excellent interview with Anthony Joshua. What did you make of Anthony Joshua's demeanour for out there? We obviously have seen the headlines with regards to Lennox Lewis. What did you make of the interview on us as a whole? Yeah, I thought, look, he, it was a it was a different interview from AJ. I think it, you know, opened up a lot of his feelings. I think um, there's been a lot of confusion since the, 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 you know, and there would be, you know, losing for the first time, coming to terms with that. Obviously, you know, reading that you're the, the greatest heavyweight in the world and suddenly, you know, you open social media and it's people saying you're not as good as you thought you were and all that. We've been telling you they weren't as good as you thought he were, but you were running around comparing him to Muhammad, Muhammad Ali, Mr. Bean. You were the one saying he's better than Ali. You were the one, and now you're backtracking. Some stuff that must be hard, and, and ultimately it's a loss. You know, he lost in the amateurs. He was always, in my opinion, going to lose in the pros. And... Whoa, oh my God! He was always going to lose in pros. Oh my God, can somebody find the interview out where Adam Smith said he would tip in Joshua to go 50-0 and 0 and retire and beat Marciano's record? Oh my God, what a backtrack from Bean. No wonder he's closed his fucking eyes. Fucking Bean! Fucking runner Bean, could have been, should have been, never been. Beans on toast, rumpel fucking stiltskin, you fucking weirdo. You want locking up, Operation U Tree. We didn't think it would be Andy Ruiz, but it was. Um, so I think he's coming to terms with a lot of things. Um, and I think that it was probably an interview where, yeah, maybe he just, uh, there's a, there was a little bit of love lost at, for, for the game or for the sport. Maybe he was just sort of rethinking his, uh, his, his, his mindset ahead of the rematch. I don't think sure the rematch was, it wasn't certainly announced. We didn't know about Saudi Arabia at the time. There was, you know, and I think probably a lot of balls are still in the air. I think now he knows where the fight is, what the date is, what needs to be done. I've certainly seen a change over the last sort of 72 hours I've spent with him. Uh, he's very focused. He wants to win hugely. His team are talking about him fighting on for a long time. Uh, maybe this isn't just a grabbing the money. Maybe this is a sensible, we'll take a good 
a good amount of money for this. And, and I was going to want to watch Joshua if he gets levered in this fight. I what? I, I would want to watch it. I would want to watch him again. And does Joshua even look like he's bothered about fighting? Eh? He doesn't look to me like he's bothered. He looks to me like he just wants to get paid one more time, and that's it. I mean, if he gets beat up again this time, how can these keep? Recycling this crap. It's unbelievable. We'll win the fight and we'll go on to even better things But um, yeah, I think he's now focused on the fight. I think he'll want to get straight into training camp after this press tour finishes It's been a long and and uh, well, it's been a short time trip But it's been a long trip in many ways because of the travel and the, uh, the, the you know the, the mental tiredness whatever but AJ has been a great form so has Andy Ruiz and I think they're both itching to get into camp and uh, and get ready to rumble on December the 7th. They're fighters and that's what they do and I think Joshua uh, wants to try and right the wrong and Andy Ruiz wants to prove that it's not just a one-off and that he deserves to be uh, the world heavyweight champion that he is. So uh, I think it's um, it's all attention now to the training camps and to the fight itself. So uh, so yeah, I mean his, his demeanor is, I think he's in a great place. Um, how you take a loss that's that's what makes that's what can make or break you, and I think now he's certainly got his eye on the uh, on the prize, and that prize is retaining or reclaiming the belts, and then retaining them for for for, for years to come after that. If he can do that, is he good enough? Can Ruiz do it a second time around? We know immediate rematches can often go the same way, but we know also rematches can be can be different, and there could be a a, a, a total role reversal if Anti Joshua uses his. How many rematches do we see right, where the guy has been tonked? And we're not just talking Lennox Lewis Rahman or Lennox Lewis McCall where he just got caught with a punch. We're talking tonked and quit. How many times do we see that? How many times do we even see a fighter get tonked and even rematch him? Did we see Boutte fight Frotch? It rematch? No, we didn't. Look, when they get tonked, that's it. These are just wheeling him out because he's a commodity, but he's a falling star now, isn't he? Physical attributes properly. He could make this a, a much more simple affair, but it's a mental battle too. And uh, I know Andy Ruiz thinks he's going to go and do it all over again. So uh, that's what's compelling. That's what's fascinating. I'd rather talk about the fight than uh, all the other issues around it because it's going to be one of the most watched fights in years. I think it's, uh, you know... Saudi Arabia adds a, a, a difference to it, of course it does, but I think it's all about the, the rematch and what happens to Anthony Joshua and that's something that we've been involved in since the the moment he turned professional in 2013 and um, you know we're, we've are we been proud to be part of him, he's a fantastic ambassador um, and one loss doesn't mean... Fantastic ambassador? Hmm, that's interesting that isn't it, that's very interesting from Bean very interesting, Mr. Bean. Mm. Oh my mm. Interesting. Interesting. He's not. He's, he's a bad guy or he's he's even a bad fighter he's a very good fighter and he's a very good guy and uh, you know we're, we're with him on this journey Andy Ruiz has been a, a breath of fresh air in the heavyweight division and uh, listen it's been a, a great media tour it's a breath of fresh air yeah he's had some Taco Bells hasn't he and some Snickers but as fat as a pig Michelin man he still bounces Joshua around ring so far and uh, let's get him into camp and get them fighting Make a good point, though. I think people people are losing sight of the fact that this is a very intriguing, fascinating fight. With that being said, had this fight been in New York or in Cardiff, would there have been this furore around it? I mean, you would have taken away kind of the the negativity surrounding Saudi Arabia. Does that frustrate you that that's kind of lingering over what is still a very intriguing fight? Well, boxing is the most unpredictable business in the world. You know? Right. Watch Adam Smith sidestep the question now. He's asked him the question now and watch what he comes out with now. Watch, listen to this. No, 
we've been to some uh, some interesting countries over the years. We've been to some fun venues. We've been to some huge venues. We've been to some tiny ones. We've been to uh, into backyards. We've done all sorts of things, you know. And and you never quite know. Fun venues. We've been to some huge venues. We've been to some tiny ones. We've been to uh, into backyards. We've done all sorts of things, you know. And and you never quite know. Sometimes you know, fighters don't make the weight. You know, Luis Jose Luis Castillo and Diego Corrales. You know, their third fight never happened because Castillo was five pounds over, and the thing was 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 you know, Diego was left in tears. And you, you never know in boxing. It's there's always a story. So, you know. People are going to talk about every aspect of this. Of course, Saudi opens uh, that avenue up. Um, listen, the fight is going to happen in Saudi Arabia. As I said, we've been there. Um, we were welcomed, and uh, our team will be going back there. And I want to make sure that you know we cover it, as I said, to the best of our abilities. Um, but it's about Anthony Joshua's fight, um, and that's what we've got to concentrate on. And I think that it's a sporting event. Uh, sporting event. Oh my god, it's a sporting event. Well, of course it is, Mr. Bean. Answer the question, though, Bean. Could you imagine Mr. Bean in court? It'd be unreal, wouldn't it? And it's an event that, uh, wherever it takes place, it's going to be watched by uh, a great deal of people. Um, and there's, a, and there's, I think, a real uh, sense in Saudi Arabia that they want to do something incredible. And um, let's wait and see. Um, it's... Uh, exciting it's a it's a different challenge and it's exciting and there it goes again with that word challenge today's word is challenge in fact the video is going to be called challenge mr bean well hang on a minute into backyards we've done all sorts of things you know and, and you never quite know sometimes you know fighters don't make the weight you know Luis Jose Luis Castillo and Diego Corrales you know their third fight never happened because Castillo was five pounds over and the thing was 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 you know Diego what has Diego Corrales Castillo got to do with this fight, what are you to what shit are you coming out with, Bean? Left in tears, and you, you never know in boxing. It's there's always a story. So, you know, people are going to talk about every aspect of this. Of course, Saudi opens uh, that avenue up. Um, Avenues are being opened up now. Why don't you just talk about beheading and genocide and human rights and all that, Mr. Bean? Come on, talk proper. Don't talk shite. You are not a politician, Bean. Listen, the fight is going to happen in Saudi Arabia. As I said, we've been there. Um, we were welcomed, and uh, our team will be going back there. And I want to make sure that you know we cover it, as I said, to the best of our abilities. Um, but it's about Anthony Joshua's fight, um, and that's what we've got to concentrate on. And I think that it's a sporting event, and it's an event. Sporting that, uh, event takes place. It's going to be watched by uh, a great deal of people. Um, and there's, a, and there's, I think, a real uh, sense in Saudi Arabia that they want to do something incredible. And uh, incredible now, they're going to be incredible. In the now out of Warhouse, and you know, he's gone on to the direct massive advocate. Ruiz versus Anthony Joshua. Uh, we were pressure on their on their shoulders over there to deliver a spectacular event. Um, and let's uh, let's see what happens. But for me, it's about the fight. For me, it's about the fact you fucking lying little weedy little weasel bastard, Mr. Bean. For you, it's about hitting your targets with Sky and getting your bonus, right? This man here, this man here is on 1.2 million a year plus bonus, which can be anything up to two and a half million pound a year. This is what this man is creaming, creaming out of Sky coffers that's what he's doing creaming oh look at the fucking state of this man here i ain't even had my dinner yet okay well looks like we're about to get started adam i'll grab you afterwards if that's okay still have a few more questions thanks very much for speaking to boxing social no problem rob thanks cheers adam picking it straight back up there we're now after the press conference uh andy ruiz versus anthony josh look at fucking state of this here look at that comb over he needs to get eddie Hearns. uh 
Air transplant man on job, done it. Or why don't they just shave it off and go Viking style like me? Uh, uh, we were talking about all things Saudi. Uh, just finally, I know we've mentioned about women throughout this interview. Uh, somebody I know you have a, a tremendous amount of respect for, Katie Taylor. Yeah. Uh, Adam Smith's got respect for women now all of a sudden. Oh my fucking good God, I've heard it all. Uh, he didn't got no respect for Jane Couch, did he? Hey, uh, the pioneer for women's boxing, Jane Couch, we an MBE. And no respect for her when she wanted a bit of pundit work, has he? Hey, no respect for Jane Couch. Um, there was, there's obviously been discussions whether or not she will be on the card. As I understand it, doesn't quite fit into her schedule, boxing in November. Would she be allowed, in theory, to, to box on this card? It would seem to be, you know, undercard of such a huge fight, the perfect opportunity for her to box on the card. Why isn't she? Rob, as you and I know, I'm a massive advocate of, of women in business, women in sport, and that's why I've got terrific women around me on, on my team. Terrific men as well. It's a, it's a, it's a very mixed team. It's uh, fantastic. We've got a wonderful director, Sarah Chenery, a, a brilliant production executive, Jenny Blackmore, a fantastic assistant producer, Leanne Johnson Arnison, and obviously Anna Walhouse, Sarah Hornsby, our longtime PA has gone on to bigger and better things but there's you know there's a, there's a there's a big focus and in boxing you know we were among the first people to do that it was very much seen as a, a male uh, dominated sport and uh, we brought women not only into the team but obviously into in front of camera as well and Anna's done brilliant listen let me tell you this right this is what Adam Smith's forgetting right Adam I could go on all day about Adam Smith I've got a couple of corker ones about Adam Smith but they're not, I'm not going to come out with them. They're going to be coming out in Dennis Hobson's book. But let me just tell you this. Adam Smith did not want women boxing on Sky. He didn't want it. They didn't want women around them. That's, that's true. That is true. But the PC Brigade did. So they had to swallow. So all that was just come out there is a load of knackers. A load of knackers. And I'm just going to go through it. It's Adam Smith one here. Then we'll do an Eddie Hearn one and Robert McCracken. And you'll hear it for yourselves about the knackers that these lot are preaching. Like I just said earlier, all they're going to do is wheel Joshua out and they all just want to get paid. That's all it is. Joshua's just a commodity to them now. He's on slide. It's just a case of getting as much money as you can. The game is up, in it? They've padded Joshua's record out for four years now. The game is up. Right, 2013 to 2019, they padded it up, but mainly the last three or four years it's been really padded. Right, the game is up now, it's been found out, it's the business end of the fights now. All Joshua is going to be now is an opponent for the rest of them to bash up, but he's got a big name and he generates money. These people know that and they're going to keep wheeling him out if he gets beat again. Robert McCracken, I dare say, could be a casualty. Or they'll be telling him, well, you know, you've still got it. It's just a bad night at office. And even Ali got beat. And they're just going to keep wheeling him out like they did in Muhammad Ali. And in the end, Joshua, if he keeps fighting, he'll end up talking like Riddick Bowe and Dave Allen. <laughs> My health's okay. We're <laughs> talking like that. Trust me. Just keep watching it unfold. Boxing is the most unforgiving sport in the world. And whenever you've got treacherous people that are eaten, educated, pulling the strings, it's always going to be the same. In the that, we had Kate Abdo originally and now Anna Woolhouse. And, you know, so that's a, that's a real thing really close to my heart, which is what I was saying earlier. I want to make sure that everybody uh, can do their job wherever they are, whether it's Saudi Arabia or uh, out in the, in, the, in the Far East, in Australia, in America, wherever we are, we want to make sure that our, our, uh, our team, our staff, can do our, uh, our, best, our best possible things and have the best possible working uh, environment. Katie Taylor, as you're right, I'm a, I'm a massive supporter of her. Also, Savannah Marshall, He's uh, reaching out of the matchroom banner. There was, there's obviously been discussions whether or not she will be on the card. As I understand it, doesn't quite fit into her schedule, boxing in November. Among the first people to do that, 
long-time PA has gone on to bigger and better things. But there's, you know, there's a, there's a there's a big focus. And in boxing, you know, we were among the first people to do that. It was very much seen as a, a male-dominated uh, sport, and uh, we brought women not only into the team but obviously into in front of camera as well. And Anna's done brilliantly at that. We had Kate Abdo originally, and now Anna Wallhouse. And you know, so that's a that's a real thing, really close to my heart, which is what I was saying earlier. I want to make sure that everybody uh, can do their job wherever they are, whether it's Saudi Arabia or uh, out in the in the in the Far East, in Australia, and America, wherever we are, we want to make sure that our our uh, our team, our staff, can do our uh, our best our best possible things and have the best possible working uh, environments. Katie Taylor, as you're right, I'm a, I'm a massive supporter of her. Also, Savannah Marshall, who's uh, reaching out of the match from Banner, was my. Uh, uh, scholar at Sky for, for four years. Um, yeah, I mean, both of them could fight on the card in uh, in Saudi Arabia. I think it would be terrific if that was the case. I mean, could they have a, a women's fight on the card? Yeah, of course they could. Um, but will they have women fighting, Adam? That's the question we want you to answer. Don't talk in riddles, all right? Don't piss the fans off, you greedy little, grubby little weasel of a man. Fucking Mr. Bean. I think that will be a, a real statement too. Um, Katie is, I think, going to fight in November, so I don't think the December 7th day would work for Katie. Um, we can't, cannot wait to see her back. Um, so she's going to be on a big show, uh, I think, in November. We're just still finalising that. She needs to fight that girl that she just lost to, but she got the decision. That's who Katie Taylor needs to fight. And um, But yeah, I mean, there's no reason why not no reason at all and uh, if it's not Katie whether it could be Savannah or, or somebody else but women's boxing has become massive so uh, everybody all around the world needs to realize that not just in Saudi or uh... nobody gives a fuck about women's boxing Adam stop lying nobody gives a fuck about it and you know it or, or other countries but um, but yeah I mean it's uh, it's very important to me that uh, that the women are treated absolutely uh, uh, brilliantly uh, wherever we go uh, and that means uh, in and out of the ring yeah. um, moving on you are. Oh, I've had some stuff cut out there. Rob Tebbert cutting stuff out. Oh, my God. Rob Tebbert, the man of the people, Mr. Voice of the Hardcore, cutting stuff out. But a man who's been established in the sport for a long time. I know you're a massive boxing fan, boxing nut. Would you make a KSI versus Logan Paul? <laughs> you really are pushing me today, aren't you, Rob? <laughs> I love oh, fucking hell. If that's pushing, Adam, wait while you meet me. I'll push you. I'll push you over a fucking cliff. Or under a bush, you prick. Beer and teas. Um, there's always controversy, there's always debates, there's always, you know, there's a. I wouldn't say there's agendas from people to say, look, you know, let's try and throw scorn on certain things. Ultimately, it's uh, it's your job to ask the questions and it's my job to try and answer them. Well, uh, fucking answer then! Uh, Kelsey and Logan Paul. Look, my, my son is nearly 12. And when Isaac Chamberlain and Lawrence Sicoli were fighting, and that was a big fight, you know, two unbeaten fighters at the O2. And I said the day, I said, well, I said the day of the fight, I said to Oscar, I said, uh, who wins the fight tonight? And he said KSI. And I said, who? He said KSI. And I said, no, Sicoli or Chamberlain? He said KSI. What do you mean you don't know who KSI is? I said, KSI, he's, he's that YouTuber. He said, look him up. He's got millions of following. He's fighting tonight. And then he goes and fights Logan Paul. And you're thinking, oh, really? In boxing? I mean, come on. How big an event was that? How big a business event was it? How many people want to watch it? Um, people are talking about boxing, whatever levels. Look, you know, in the last five, six, seven years, British boxing has, has really hit the map and people want to fight here. Lomachenko the other day came over, fantastic to have the best fighter in the world, fight on our shores. You know, we've had Froch Groves, we've had AJ Klitschko, we've had huge stadium events. It's brilliant. That's also meant a boom. What has all that got to fucking do with why you're putting KSI Logan Paul on? What has that got to do with anything? Eh? Unbelievable. I mean, women's boxing, a boom in uh, gyms, a boom in, in discipline. What has all this got to do with question you've been asked, Adam? Around the country and structure that boxing brings. It, it's brought a lot of charity events and, uh, you know, it's... Structure! Class the operator! Rough, tough, rugged. The YouTubers involved, they haven't chosen uh, Tiddlywinks, have they? They've chosen boxing. Um, so look, you know, Eddie said, he, 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 I think he said he'd never get involved in something like this. Well, he has. 
Matchroom are our partners. We've got to look at it. We've got to decide what we want to do with it. Um, I'm buoyed by the fact that Billy Joe Saunders and Devon Haney and Great Fighters might be on the card. So it's not just a, uh, a sort of one-off fight. Um, also, they're turning professional. You know, there's no head guards. It's it's on a big, proper professional show. So it's different. But um, yeah, there's an audience for it. Obviously, there was a huge audience last time. There's a there's a feeling that that audience, if they're they're watching the likes of Billy Joe Saunders as well, they're going to get into you know mainstream boxing and they're going to become fans as well we're always looking at growing the sport so uh, it's an interesting one to look fucking growing the sport are you fucking having a laugh putting you two youtubers on as a headline on a sky pay-per-view are you fucking having a joke okay and we'll look at it what do you make of people's suggestions that, I mean, I understand the fact that it is now professional last time around, it was head guards and 16 ounce gloves I believe, this is now a quote unquote professional fight, but you've got world champions on the undercards of, of debutantes, professional debutantes, what do you say to, to hardcore fans of the sports or even Sky subscribers who are, you know, hesitant to, to as I understand it, the fight will be some form of su subscription, it will be some form of pay-per-view. What do you make of fans who don't want to pay to watch two debutants fight, but they also, but they do want to pay to watch Billy Joe Saunders and Devin Haney? As I've always said with Sky Sports Box Office events, we do everything we can to make them as dark. Fucking Sky Box Office, KSI versus Logan Paul. Fucking Sky Box Office. What the fucking hell am I fucking involved in here? What the fuck am I watching here? Sky fucking box office. Are you fucking having a laugh? Really entertaining and, and wrapped around as possible, but you don't have to buy them. Um, it's it's the consumer's choice. It's the customer's choice. You know, we try and put as much as we can on Sky Sports. Um, a lot of good fights coming up. We've got that great night in October. As I said, I'm sure we've got a, a, an announcement about Katie Taylor pretty soon. We're hoping Callum Smith to back end of the year. There's a lot of excitement there, and we want to make sure that Sky Sports shows are, are excellent in their own right. But we all know that the, the big money you know, then it becomes a box office event, and we've got to make sure that they are value for money. I think we got that with Lomachenko last week. I think we Event! The word event keeps using that word event. We're going to get that October the 26th. It's a fantastic card. If this is some, some sort of subscription uh, decision for uh, for Logan, uh, Paul and KSI, then then that's, you know, that's that's based on uh, on business models and, and, and what we feel. It's Business models and what we feel. What the fucking hell are these fucking clowns on here? What fucking drugs are these people on the need to give me them? It's, uh, you know, I, I, it's a difficult one because, you know... It's a difficult one. Just say you're a money-grabbing little bastard! You little fucking weasel! As a boxing fan, I want to see Billy Joe Saunders because he's a great fighter, and I want to see Devon Haney and how far he'll go. Am I fascinated by the sort of the, the hoopla around KSI and Logan Paul and the fact that my kids want to watch that more than they do maybe even AJ and Ruiz? What the fucking hell? Adam Smith's kids want wanna what well, Adam Smith's kids wanna watch KSI Logan Paul, right? So Adam Smith has to put it on Sky Box Office. What the fucking hell what the fuck is he on? You've got to look at the younger generation. You've got to look at what's coming through. And you know, my son wants to see AJ because you know AJ is a cool guy, and he also wants to see KSI and Logan Paul because you know they're they're heroes to them on the YouTube world. You know, my little girl, she's eight. She's got her own YouTube channel. You know that. Oh fucking hell! Fire Adam Smith's fucking daughter's eight year old with a YouTube channel. Fucking get a life, man! It reminds me of Adam Smith. Have you read Adam Smith's book, Beautiful Brutality, where he talks about where he were going to school as a 10-year-old, talking into a dictaphone, pretending to do a commentary? Fucking Jesus Christ. Can you imagine what his school friends thought of him? Fucking, but they were flicking his fucking ears, weren't they, in class? Fucking little bean. Fucking weasel. <laughs> It's a different sort of audience, and, and I think if we can make them uh, excited about the, you know, sort of the, the higher level of boxing, then that's fantastic. But yeah, I understand that. It's a difficult one to see Logan, uh, Paul and KSI maybe nominally top of the bill when obviously there's maybe world championship fighters sort of underneath them. But I think Billy Joe was, was texting KSI saying, I can't wait to be on your card. Billy Joe Saunders were texting KSI. Are you having a fucking laugh? Billy Joe Saunders is fucking fuming. He's a laughing stock. 
Billy Joe Saunders hasn't even got his Twitter no more, you fucking little prick, Mr. Bean. It'd have been Matchroom that would fucking tweet him, wouldn't it? Fucking, are you having a fucking laugh? Billy Joe Saunders is texting KSI? I'm on it to be on your undercard. Oh, fucking hell, do me a favour, Adam. Fuck off, you weasel. So... Oh, fucking flick your fucking ear again, you cunt. You know, it's a different way of looking at it. It's entertainment. We did Mayweather McGregor. Did I really think that Conor McGregor was going to beat Floyd Mayweather? Listen, do you know these people? They're just trying to hit targets because Eddie Hearn's not got the staff, so they're just writing scripts. They wrote the Mayweather McGregor one, the KSI Logan Paul one. They're going to fucking countries where people are fucking beheading people for doing no hardly. Fucking, what the fuck? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Mayweather not for one moment, but he entertained us for weeks, you know, he, he went into the fight, he, he was a, a, an incredible character, it was a theatrical show, it was fantastic from start to finish, everyone seemed to enjoy it. It crossed over into the UFC world, maybe both codes got more followers, more eyeballs, and if that's what this is doing, which is obviously why Eddie's got involved, and that's what's not... Eddie's not got involved for crossover sport, he's got involved because it does pound notes. Why don't you just admit it, they're doing pound notes and they want to get as much money in as they can. They're abusing the system. They're abusing the audience. Right? The casual audience have sussed on to Joshua, so they're looking for the next fix. That's all it is. The numbers have been dropping off in the UK. They gave thousands of tickets away at that Tackham fight and the Povetkin fight. Joshua doesn't do the numbers that he used to do, so they're looking for other avenues to stay in the game. Why don't you just admit that, Mr. Bean? Fucking gee, the lies that they fucking come out with is unreal. I mean, we've got to look seriously at for the future of boxing. For the future of boxing, for the future of your fucking job, you fucking prick. Is there a risk of alienating the hardcore, the people who were there before? And fucking two right there the is. Office? You're hardcore, I'm hardcore. We're How the fuck are you hardcore, Mr. Bean? Putting fucking KSI Logan Paul on Sky Box Office. You're not fucking hardcore. You've never been hardcore. You little fucking we you little weakling who went to fucking eat and fuck you. Fuck you, no, no, There's a lot of us out there. But we all know that, you know, Boxing News has a certain uh, trade audience. We know that, you know, Box Nation has a certain trade audience. We all have boxing on all the time. You know, the reality is that there are hardcore trade fans and there are casual fans who like the big occasion and there are different fans who want to see YouTubers fight and there are others that want to see the women fight or charity events or whatever. There's a whole different range of the way boxing can appeal to the masses. And I think we've got to look at growing the sport. Uh, we can't sit still. You know, We've listened to digital, social. We've uh, we've changed the format. We go back to the women in boxing now. Anna presenting, and you know we, we've made changes as well from a broadcasting point of view. We can't make changes, you know, necessarily from the sport point of view, but we can have our opinions. And you know, you and I, first and foremost, will always watch a six rounder at your call because we're a fight fan. But I'm fascinated by why people are tuning into KSI and Logan Paul. I look forward to meeting them. I'm not fucking fascinated, and I won't be watching it. And I'm a fucking hardcore bean in person talking to them about what they think about you know their their appeal and, and what they feel about boxing you know I'm, I'm, I'm always looking at the likes of Andy Murray and Rory McIlroy and Steven Gerrard and Wayne Rooney all these these top sportsmen from different different uh, worlds who love boxing what the fuck has Wayne Rooney and Steven Gerrard watching boxing got to fucking do with fucking KSI going on Sky Adam what the fuck has that got to do with it eh it's got fuck all to do with it they fucking only watch boxing because the fucking scouse mates are fighting, that's all. Do me a fucking favour. You know, I talked to Liam Plunkett the other day, he loves the fight game. He was there for, for Lomachenko. Who gives a fuck about Liam Plunkett? He wanted to be around it. I'm sure you'll get a lot of these people that want to be around KSI and Logan Paul, not because they're trade boxing fans, but because they, you know, they want to see different events. Uh, that's what it is. Here you go, that word again. Events. Today's word is event. It is. It is about showbiz. It is about putting bums on seats. Eddie's very good at that. You know, look at what Barry's done with the darts world. He's turned it from a, a pub sport. We've we've really helped with our production values, but they've turned into a mega, mega business, and uh, everyone wants to watch a bit of darts now. What the fuck has darts got to do with fucking KSI? 
What shite are you spouting? I think that maybe in five years' time, everybody's going to want to watch boxing at all sorts of different levels, in all sorts of ways, and... What the fuck is this? Are we going to be having fucking them stupid Spencer Oliver fucking fights on? White collar knackers? Is that what we're going to be having on? Or celebrities fighting celebrities? What the fucking hell is this? Uh, you know, as a sport that you and I love, that's only got to be good. It's got... You don't love boxing, Adam. You fucking never loved it. You love money! I move forwards, uh, but I do understand the, the hardcore trade fans and, um, you know, there is a, a bit of me that just wants to be at your call watching, um, you know, the best fight the best at whatever level. Um, and I understand the, the sort of, uh, the fighters that are coming out saying, you know, it's, it's, you know, we've worked really hard, long and hard for many, many years to even get to a, you know, a title level and, and these guys come in, they waltz in and they're, you know, headlines at the, at the stable centre, but that's the world we live in now and, uh, you know, if, if my kids are talking about it and your kids and others and, and they want to see the KSI and Logan Paul for, I mean, Spencer Oliver, I remember saying to me just before KSI came over, he said, he said, Adam, he said, this is event of the copper box, he says, you know, and I'm going to get to your Coley Chamberlain, but I've got to help them out first, and he said, it's this KSI guy. I said, tell me about KSI. He said, I didn't know about KSI until a few weeks ago. He said, but I do now. I tell you what, he knows even more about KSI than, than most. And that's because of Spencer Oliver knows about it. He's in thick of it. He did. He helped do it first fight. They're all lying in the fucking pockets, lot of them. And it's trickling down, isn't it? And Eddie's got a sniff of it. Because he's got into it. And we have to get into it. You know, we've, we've got the kids, it's the next generation. And, uh, you know, it's part of the business now. That's, that's the truth. And then next year there'll be something else. Um, but, yeah, it's a fascinating event. Fucking Jesus Christ, I fucking... What... What... what for, um, are these people out of fucking touch with reality? Are they out of touch? These fucking people are out of... What fucking planet is he on him here, Bean? Fucking Mr. Fucking Bean. Fucking... Fucking ring his... I'll do him. I'll fucking do him. Am I more excited about that than I am about Billy Joe Saunders getting back in the ring? No. But am I fascinated by it in a, in a showbiz way? Yes, I am fascinated. Fucking showbiz! Oh, fucking hell! Oh, my God! By it. And still, there are two guys getting in with uh, with gloves on their on their fists, and um, you know I have. Res Look, a promoter cannot put a fight on with two guys on a show in England if he's got a laminate from Boxing Board of Control or in America. It has to be in professional. That's why Logan Paul and KSI have gone professional. Otherwise, these couldn't get involved and. All this knack is about they're going to put world champions on undercard and grow sport and all that. It's just complete and utter knackers. It's knackers. And Billy Joe Saunders knows it's knackers, but they all want to get paid. Tyson Fury knows it's knackers why he's fighting stiffs. But they're getting paid and they're just taking their dicks out of their pants and taking a piss on every boxing fan in the fucking country and I'm fucking had enough. And I'm making a stand about it. And people need to fucking back the porky movement. It's for any person that does that at whatever level. So, um, in a way, bring it on, Rob. Fucking oh, what? Ah! Um, just finally, nice easy one to end with. Uh, this past weekend we saw Vasily Lomachenko versus Luke Campbell. An outstanding fight at the O2 Arena. Um, two questions. How good is Lomachenko? How good is Luke Campbell? I thought it was a wonderful advert for boxing. I mean, What, Luke Campbell winning one round? We talk about the different ways of looking, the trade fans, etc. Everyone who loved boxing was in that arena. On, uh, on. Well, I want there. I don't like to see butchery. The 16,000 that were packed into the O2, they were all fight. Packed into O2, 16,000, it holds 21,000, Adam. Fans and obviously the, the ones that watch on box office generally were as well. There were Lomachenko fans. We will hope Luke Campbell would, uh, you know, would, would do as best as he could. I think a lot of people thought that you know he would he would get stopped or, or taken out or get embarrassed. He wasn't. He was in the fight. It was a very it won one round. It won one round. Be very good performance for Luke Campbell. I thought winning one round's a good performance now. World level now. If you win a round. Paul Smith must be world level then because he fought Andre Ward. In fact, it was a brilliant performance by Luke Campbell. Lomachenko was outstanding. And brilliant, winning one round. And
And, uh, you know, he, he, he was just, I've got to say, Rob, just a privilege and a pleasure to watch. You know, I've seen Floyd Mayweather up close. I've seen Oscar De La Hoya up close. I've seen Roy Jones up close. I've seen our great guys like Joe Calzaghe and Lennox Lewis up close. And wonderful fighters, you know, over the last 30 years. Uh, brilliant, brilliant talents. And I would say Vasily Lomachenko is right up there with them. You know, he's uh, the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, in my opinion, at the moment. I have huge respect for Terence Crawford and Alexander Usyk and uh, uh, Inoue and all the great fighters out there. Canelo, obviously, that I had the pleasure of commentating on recently against Danny Jacobs. Uh, they're brilliant. But for me, Lomachenko... Right, there you go.